inner space and layers. Man's being is surrounded by many layers and these layers act as filters in the process of development. Whatever information, whatever message comes, passes through these layers. The first layer was corrupted senses. The second layer, the second layer is conditioning which comes via social, political, religious, ideologies, belief system. Everybody from the time a child is born is conditioned into many belief systems. Some of these belief systems are social, political, religious, ideological and my effort is to free your inner space of all these ideologies, conditionings, etc. The third layer is pseudo-reasoning that is one of the greatest disturbance around you. The fourth layer is emotionality or sentimentalism. In sessions these four layers have been explained. Now fifth, sixth and seventh. The fifth layer is called male expertise. Sixth layer is corrupted intuition. There is a phenomenon called intuition which of which we have become almost unaware. We do not know anything if intuition exists because intuition is the sixth layer. Five layers are so thick that one never comes to feel the sixth layer. Intuition is a totally different kind of phenomenon from reasoning. Reasoning argues, reason uses a power, a way to reach to the conclusion, but intuition jumps. It is a quantum leap. There is no process as far as intuition is concerned. It simply reaches to conclusion without any process. There have been mathematicians who could do any kind of mathematical problem without going into the process. Their functioning was intuitive. You just say the problem and before you have even finished it, the conclusion will come. You were saying it and the moment you finished, even before you finished, the conclusion has come. Mathematicians have always been puzzled by these freak phenomena. These people, how they do it? If a mathematician were going to do this problem, it might take three hours or two hours or even more. Even a computer will take a few minutes to do it. But people do not take a single moment. You may call it, it happens instantly. So in mathematics, intuition is now a recognized fact. When reasons fail, only then intuition works. And all the great scientists have become aware of it, that all their great discoveries are made not by reason but by intuition. Whenever someone reaches to the pinnacle of creativity, intuition surfaces. I have heard about Madame Curie. She was working for three years on a certain problem and was not trying to solve it from many directions. Every direction that she tried failed. One night she was utterly exhausted. She went to sleep and she decided the incident is almost like a Buddha. That night she decided now it is enough. I have wasted three years. It seems to be a futile search. I have to drop it. That night she dropped it and went to sleep. In the night she got up in her sleep. She went to her desk and wrote the answer. Then she went back and fell asleep. 
In the morning she could not even remember but the answer was there on the desk and there was nobody in the room and even if there had been someone answer would not have been possible. She had been working for three years. One of the greatest minds of this age was Madame Curie. But there was nobody and the answer was there. Then she looked more minutely and she realized it was her own handwriting. Then suddenly the dream surfaced. She remembered it was she, as if she had been, had seen a dream in the night in which she was sitting at the desk and writing something from some other door which was not reason. The answer happened. This is intuition. Buddha struggled for six years to attain to enlightenment but could not. One day he dropped the whole idea of attaining. He was crossing the river Niranjana. It is a shallow stony river. He was so weak and frail that he could not cross the river. He fell. Then the thought came to his mind, if enlightenment happens to him, his body will not be able to sustain. He dropped the whole idea of attaining. He rested under a tree. He remained. He fell down in the river. He held on to the tree that was leaning from the other side of the river and he remained watching the stars disappear one by one. Somehow gathered courage and came out and he sat under the tree and it had happened. When he opened his eyes, he was no more Siddhartha. Instead he was Gautam, the enlightened one. But first the reason has to be exhausted. This is the criteria for intuition to happen. First, the reason has to be exhausted. Intuition functions only when reason is completely exhausted. Intuition has no process. It simply jumps from the problem to conclusion. It is a shortcut. It is a flash. We have corrupted intuition. Man's intuition is almost absolutely corrupted. Woman's intuition is not corrupted as much. That is why women have something called hunch. A hunch is just a fragment of intuition. It cannot be proved you are going to take a flight or you are going somewhere. Your woman simply says that she is not going and she will not allow you to go either. She feels as if something is going to happen. Now this is nonsense as far as reason is concerned. You have much work to do, everything is planned and you have to go. Your woman would not allow you to leave. And the next day you read in the newspaper that something happened. Now the woman cannot say how she knows, there is no way. It is just a hunch. Just a feeling in the guts, but that too is very corrected. That is why it is just a flash. And when all the five other layers have disappeared, you have dropped fixed ideas. Because you have been taught that reason is the only door to reach to any conclusion. When you have dropped this fixation, this reason fixation, intuition starts flowering. Then it is not just like a flash instead, it is constantly available source. You can close your eyes, you can go into and always you can get the right direction from it. This is what Fisher Hoffman people think of as the guide. It is the process really goes in. It is very difficult because those five layers have been crossed first and I do not think many people are capable of it. Even those who are in Hoffman therapy, that is a kind of a therapy, Fisher-Hoffman 
therapy. But the idea is perfectly right. If those five layers are broken, then something arises in you which can be called the guide. An intuition is the guide. In Islam, we use the word Khizr salam, the inner guide. We have given a manifestation to all these things. We consider Khizr salam as a person. This is the voice of intuition. When all other layers are broken, reasoning has exhausted and it is no more functional then something from within you is born that is intuition and in Islam we call this as Khizr salam and Hinduism we give a name to this phenomena as Narad the wandering sage whenever someone reaches to that limit when reason is no more all the layers have been broken all of a sudden Narad happens to a Hindu mind and Khizr salam happens to a Muslim mind. In the East, this term, this we call is as inner guru, inner master. Once your intuition has started functioning, you need not go and ask any master, sheikh or guru for any advice. Intuition is to be in tune with your inner space, oneself, totally in tune with oneself and out of that tuning something arises from nowhere and then the seventh or the last layer. Last layer of falsity which is pseudo-self, the ego, the notion of being unique, special, exceptional. The notion of doing one's own things and you do not know who you are, you do not know what your thing is. This is something that always remains. That is where I had explained the most ordinary is the extraordinary. The notion of the ego goes on correcting you, then you cannot listen to truth and this becomes a problem every day. These are the seven layers. Now let me go back to the parable. The dialogue between the Sheikh, Sufi Sheikh Ajnavi and his disciple, the Sufi master Ajnavi said, write to Mullah Firoz and tell him that I have no time to engage him in correspondence and therefore have nothing to say to his letter. Mullah Firoz must have been a very learned man of his time. Mullah in fact means pundit, a scholar, a learned man. He must have been offended and annoyed by Ajnabi's assertion. The masters operate from inner space where all the layers have been broken down. Intuition is operating at that time, whatever the master says is offensive to all that is known. Because with intuition, a master enters into the unknown realm. Masters are there to shock. And when there is a man of reasoning, man of knowing, the greatest shock is to those who think they know, but in reality, they do not know. The knowledgeable man immediately feels offended because he goes into the shara, he goes into the scriptures, this is what it is written in the scriptures, but what the master says is totally different. Because the man of knowing has his own source of knowing, he talks from there and the man of knowledge always looks into the scriptures. He has no source to check upon. He has no authentic experience of his own. He lives in a kind of pseudo-reasoning, pseudo-ego, argumentation, verbal knowledge, belief system and all that. The Sheikh Ajnavi said, write to Mullah Firoz and tell him that I have no time to engage him in correspondence and therefore 
have nothing to say to his letter. The disciple Amini said, Is it your intention to annoy him with this letter, with this response? That is the intention always of the master, to annoy you. Because only if you are annoyed, you can be changed. If you are annoyed, then there is a possibility, then you can start moving to other side. Ajnavi said, he has been annoyed by some of my previous writings. This annoyance has caused him to write to me this time. My purpose in writing the passage which angers him was to anger such as he is. That was his purpose, to arouse anger in him and that was fulfilled. He wanted to anger people such as Mullah, the knowledgeable people. Amini said, and this letter will anger him further. Sheikh responded, yes. When he was enraged at what I had written earlier, he did not observe his own anger, which was my intention. Everyone has anger in him, greed in him. When master creates a situation, he becomes oblivious of that. He thought that he was observing me, whereas he was only feeling angry. Now I write again to arouse anger, so that he will see that he is angry. The objective is for a man to realize that the work of the master is a mirror in which he sees himself. So he creates a situation. Irrespective of what people think about him, his only objective is to manifest truth in every possible manner, through every possible word that he speaks, through each action or whatever he is. This you have to keep in mind constantly because this is happening on a day-to-day -day basis. If I say something, never be bothered about me. Do not think why I have said this, rather on the contrary, just look inside yourself at what it has done to you. I said something, now there are two possibilities. You can think that I am wrong, I am offending, I am insulting you, humiliating, degrading, something like that happens and this is where the disciples move away from the masters. If the master says that this is what he is going to do, then it will not work. Then it will not come as a shock then you will miss the point. But if you start watching and observing, why am I angered? Why is there this annoyance in me? Why am I disturbed when the Sheikh has said this thing? Then you are on the right track. Then you will come closer to the Sheikh than even before. Always remember this, what I say, how I say it, why I say it, there is no way for you to decide. There is no way for you to even understand. All that you can do in your situation right now to see what happens to you. If I slap your face, do not be worried why I did it. Whether I am an angry man or an aggressive or violent, do not be worried about that. Just close your eyes and go into meditation and see why are you feeling offended. Watch your mind and that is what is going to help. I remember while growing up with the Sufi sheikhs, Sheikh Onkarna, Shakuntala Dev. Someone is talking to him and he praises me. He will immediately say, instead of responding to the person in the same way, he will not say anything instead. He said, no, 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 he is stupid. Now, the other people are praising that I know so much. I can give an explanation to the words of the master. And he said that this man, no, 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 he doesn't know anything. He is just stupid. It may offend you. But I have always pondered, meditated, why did the master said so? There has to be a meaning behind it process of growth behind it. 
and those words used to please me instead of whenever he had praised or anything that means something is wrong that is why i say the spiritual path is not for the mediocre who come out of curiosity to attend to these sessions out of reasoning this is not a school and nothing is taught here i do not teach you anything this is just a lab an alchemical lab something is happening here it is a process of transformation if you remember this then you can be immensely benefited yes when he has enriched at what i had written in the first place sheik ashnavi said he did not observe his own anger because when i had written something and he had read it he is a man of knowledge he is a man of understanding he immediately was enraged at what i said but this is not is written in the shara this is not what it is in the scriptures he did not watch his own anger which was my intention he forgot completely of his anger he thought that he was observing me whereas he was only feeling angry now i write again to arouse his anger this is the way master creates a negative pull in you and as long as you are thinking that the, why did the master did so is he stupid is he it is said that you must respect your scriptures and he is saying everything against that anger is aroused in him he is thinking about the sheik and as long as he is thinking about the sheik sheik is an inner emptiness he belongs to the realm of the unknown and as long as you are thinking about him his work is done all he wants to take you out of your realm of the known and give you a taste of the unknown realm that he is and when master says something like this it is out of compassion i gave him an opportunity earlier on but he missed the opportunity because of his conditioning layers now i give him another opportunity so that he will see that he is angry the objective is for the man to realize that my work the work of a master is a mirror in which he sees himself that is why a master is a mirror in which you see yourself if sometimes you see that your face is ugly do not try to destroy the mirror change your face by destroying the mirror you will not become beautiful by escaping from the mirror you will not become beautiful and this is what happens there are two possibilities either you escape from the mirror sometimes it happens the disciple move away from the master for a longer period of time and then the master out of compassion creates a situation that they come back again so that was a hibernating period sometimes master uses the dreams give them a dream wish that you have to come back if you want to escape from the mirror then you will never see your face and you can believe that you are beautiful or you can go on facing the mirror go on seeing your ugliness and all kind of methods and processes are being made available to you so that you can change your face if you see pimples there are creams available if you see a black spots or blemish you can use many things that are available and all these things that are available to make your face look smooth presentable once again are spiritual processes ajnavi said the child may regard the adult who is trying to remove a thorn from his hand as ill intentioned is that a justification for trying to prevent the child from growing up amini said if the child harbors a grudge against the adult who removes the thorn sheik responded the child does not really harbor that grudge because something in him knows the truth this is of immense value this statement 
Yes, something in you always knows the truth. It is impossible not to know the truth. Maybe it is not very clear. Maybe it is hazy. But something in you always knows the truth. That is because of compassion, because of love that you have been hammered upon. Otherwise there is no need. Amini asked him, but what happens if he never gets to know himself and yet continues to imagine that others are motivated by personal feelings? Sheikh response, responded, if he never gets to know himself, it makes no difference as to what he thinks of other people because he can never have any appreciation of what other people are really like. The disciple inquired, Is it not possible instead of arousing anger a second time to explain that the original writing was composed to create anger in you and to invite Mullah to review his previous feelings? This is a very reasonable standpoint of the disciple. But remember that sometimes reasonable things are not very useful. That does not work. You will agree with the disciple with what he is saying. It seems to be very reasonable. What is the point of angering him again, annoying him twice? Will it not be better to explain to him why in the first place you said things to annoy him? Would it not be better to explain? The master responded, Is it possible? It is possible to do this, but it will have no effect. Effect will come only when there is a shock. A master is not interested in being polite, and he is not following any rules of etiquette. This is what is very clearly evident in the path of Zen. That aspect of Buddhism that developed in China and Japan. The masters are very rough. Sometimes they hit the disciples. Sufis did too hit the seekers also, but they hit through their gestures. What Gurdjieff did, he used to hit the people through his gestures. Someone comes, flutters in, smiling at you. All of a sudden, Gurdjieff will look at you and give you a, such a look that you feel embarrassed. This is a hit of a Sufi. Zen will take their stick and hit you on your head or throw you out of the window. A master is only interested in creating an effect, in creating an action, in creating a response. Yes, he could explain to Mullah what had happened. That may satisfy him. That may cool him down. His anger may disappear. He may no longer feel annoyed, but that is not the point, because it is not going to help him. That is not going to create the effect that the Master wants. The Master wants the Mullah to see that he is a man of knowledge, not yet man of knowing, that he was not wise. Explanation will make Mullah more knowledgeable. He will, not, he will have one more explanation. And that is not going to shatter the ego. Ego comes that you are knowledgeable. It is possible to do this, Shaker said, but it will have no effect. Rather, it will have an adverse effect. If you tell man of man your reason, he will imagine that you are excusing yourself, or it will allow, it will arouse in him sentiments which are harmful only to him. Thus, by explaining, you are actually doing nothing good but everything to his detriment. Amini said, Are there no exceptions to this rule? That man must learn through realizing his own state and that his state cannot be explained to him? Master said, There are exceptions. But if there were enough exceptions to make any difference to the world, we will not be by, there would have not been by now any Mullah Firoz left. Everyone would have been enlightened. There are not many. There are some exceptions, but they are not many. That is why they are known as exceptions. And they are very few and far 
between. They can be counted out, but they need not be reaped. A master's function, a master has to function in such a way that the rule is fulfilled, not the exception. Because 99% of the people follow the rule. Sometimes there is a rare person, but that rare person need not have any help from anybody. He will come to his realization sooner or later on his own. It may be only a question of time. The exceptional intelligence need not be worried about. The master has to function in such a way that the common mind, the normal mind, the usual mind, the non-exceptional mind starts moving and changing. This is a small discussion between the master and disciple is of immense significance for each one of us. That is why it has been chosen to explain the function of the master that he is a mirror and the layers that remain surrounding the inner space that you are. meditate over this small dialogue between Sheikh Ajnabi and his disciple Amini about Mullah Firoz. Meditate over it. It is for each one of you.